Yes. I, I kind of have a question for you, Ozzy. You said you're doing a, a melon fast. I don't know if you can hear me. Ozzy's got to hit his. Let me hit his. Uh... I was just inspired by um, his comment about being on a watermelon fast. and I've been really in, into eating watermelons lately in the summertime. I, I've been pretty much on a daily basis. We've had really good watermelons over here and uh, I've been drinking the juice a lot. And But I, I haven't experienced doing like a, a mono fruit thing, even though I'm eating mostly fruits right now, but just not mono. And um, I was just curious, um, what what level did he trans? Did you transition from to be able to sustain how long you've been in it? And if you've done it before, how did you come out of it? All right. Can you hear me? Does, does that, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Does, does that, do you understand my question? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I am, um, uh, well, about, about two years ago, I, I basically, I came from a horrible diet. I was meat, potatoes, fried food. I mean, I, the worst diet ever. And I was, I probably got to about 300 pounds at my heaviest. And uh, I just said I was done with it. And I, you know, I was, I found Dr. Morse and, you know, some of these raw food people at the same time. And I just went, basically I went into fruits and juices. Like I did green juices and smoothies and, and I just, the pounds were shedding off and I, and I felt great. And, uh, and just, I just keep learning. Like, I don't know, like every day it's like you learn something else or you just learn. And then, uh, so I hadn't done any, like I did a six day melon fast, probably like four, like maybe five, six months ago. That was kind of my first little mono fruit fast. And I, I really didn't feel any different. Like I felt the same, I had energy all six, all six days felt good. Were, were you craving and then, stuff uh, or no? First one I wasn't, no. And then um, about three weeks ago I did a 11 day melons and I did I did all melons. I was doing like cantaloupes and honeydews and watermelons and then I did three days of grape juice and orange juice after that and I think I, the grape juice and orange juice cleansed me more than 11 days of watermelon like that. I really was getting some stuff out when I got on the grape juice and, and orange juice. And nice. then uh, and then there was a group on Facebook that had a couple friends and they, they had knew I did a melon fast and they were like, you know, I started, it was like seven days, seven seven people on melons. And uh, so I'd say, all right, I'll, do, I'll join you. And uh, so I just all of a sudden picked it up again and um, I'm on day six today and uh, Feel real good, and then everybody's keeping track of it and uh, like doing videos on it. And a lot of them are having some serious detox and getting some mucus out and and uh, stuff like that. I, I I haven't really been craving much. Like I've been eat, I've been getting these good seeded melons, and I'm in California. Right now. There's some good organic seeded melons, and like, it's hard to find seeded melons oh, usually. So yeah. yeah, I can't find them out here in Boston, but that's a bummer. You're lucky, man. They were really good. I, found, I got like a 40-pounder one yesterday. It was huge. What? But, wow. <laughs> I've been all, you know, I've been eating it. I've probably been eating, like, well, the big one, I could probably last all day, but I've been eating like two, two max, like 20-pounders or a little less, and really that's all I needed. And uh, and I, I, some of the other people in the group have been getting lots of cravings, like, like wanting something else, and uh, they've been adding like lemon and lime to their – melons and all but I haven't really haven't had any cravings I got you know maybe a little bit here and there if I smell something or somebody's if you're around something that somebody's cooking or you're just out out and about on my walks or I smell like a barbecue or you smell something like it'll trigger other senses and then and, and you thinking about some other food but I've just yeah. been sticking to it just trying to get to Nice, man. When I come off it, I try to I try to go I try to come off pretty easy and, and stick with fruits and like some juicy fruits and and uh, just slowly come off it and 
Because I, th- I think a pre-detox, when you're trying to detox, I think pre- and post-detox are as important as the detox. You yeah. know, I feel like what how you start it and how you end it is, is just as important, you know, as, as doing it. So so I try to focus on staying on the fruits and some mucusless food, uh, food when I come off it. So that answer your question? Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. It's it nice to hear about it. And I know, uh, and, and Brian, yeah, I appreciate your your post in the forum that that blew up. You know, now that the yeah, it's man, like it's time to get serious about the diet. Yeah, yeah and uh, you know, and that's been an interesting thread. You know, where people have been kind of, you know, just 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 to have people talking about mucusless in this because yeah. that has been just missing from the dialogue uh, across the board in, in a lot of places. And it's a it's and a totally like different the, piece. The mm. reason I, I I went ahead and posted that is, not not uh, not just for my benefit, but for everyone, obviously. But where I was at is I was I was sort of stuck in this constant, uh, daily eating mucus lean, and I really wanted to go to the next level. And, um, you know, since you and I had our consultation, remember I finally got off the coffee. Right. And I've been going, you know, 100% clean on that. And then the the next piece for me was to let go of these. I'm stuck on these macadamia nuts, just every day macadamia nuts with figs. Mm. And I just, I could feel myself just at a major plateau. And so, you know, I I posted that up there to try to get other people on board and kind of try to see how long I could go mucusless. And I I discovered that five days was kind of my comfort zone and. And so right now, um, today is actually my third day of my third attempt at going past, you know, five days comfortably and feeling great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Great. Nice. Let's see. uh, Tony had a question. He was, he's asking, are you doing it with, with enemas? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I actually kind of have a question about that for those of you that are, you know, practicing that a lot. Um, I, I've been doing the enemas. I, I was on it every day for a, for a while, like pretty religiously. Maybe I would miss one day a week or something. Um, lately, it it's been more like a couple times a week, maybe like as little as two, and as many as four, anywhere from two to four times a week, um, and what I experienced is at first, um, well, the reason I really just, I jumped right into the enemas because I was really clogged up from, I was on a raw food diet, but I got stuck eating avocados and lots of, I was making my raw nut milks and thinking that I was getting all my you know, soaked almonds with their enzymes and whatever nonsense. And so I was pretty clogged up when I first started the enemas just like a lot was eliminating and it was it was kind of easy and I would I would feel totally awake and after after each one now as I'm progressing to higher higher levels it, it doesn't give me that same sort of like high feeling anymore and the, what, what I've noticed is that really it just kind of gets I don't know if I'm using too much water or too large of an enema, but it mm. it takes a long time for it to eliminate, and sometimes like half of it just stays in there for the day, and I'm and I'm just kind of like irritated, and I, and so well, that's that's so really letting that, you that, know that that's basically letting you know that you're still is you know there's still a lot of waste up in there that's on the walls really? and the intestines hanging out yeah because <laughs> and i think we might have talked about that but what starts to happen is they uh the lick the liquid if if you have this hardened crusty you know just in, inside this hardened mucus that's all around the the bowel wall it takes some yeah. time for that water to come in there and start to actually it'll start to absorb into that waste 
and it just takes some time and so that's why you can and especially toward the beginning you can do an enema and then nothing comes out and you're like what just happened i just put this water up there <laughs> nothing came out and then yeah. you know you you go a couple then but then you keep doing that and that's why we always say just keep doing enemas because then eventually all of a sudden you're going to have an elimination that's going to be like wow what wow <laughs> you know that'll kind of yeah, blow yeah. your mind but yeah that's that's really just probably what's happening there is if it's sitting up in there and it's not coming out kind of clean and stuff that's you know you, you you're starting to work you know really working on those deposits of that old stuff that's, well, that's sitting I mean, up in there it's like a, a lot of it will come out it'll it'll loosen up sometimes there's like nothing in there to loosen up it's all water that comes out other times it's like it loosened up whatever the next bowel movement was going to be and that comes out and then sometimes it, it sometimes it retains a little bit like my body wants to eliminate it, but it, it can't. I just, you know. Now, how long do you hold the water in for? You know, I'll lay down on my right side. I'll take it. And then I'm really, really comfortable because my, my bag fits a half a gallon. So I wow. do it up five lemons each time, half mm. a gallon, and it goes in. But I'm only comfortable holding it laying down for maybe five minutes. And then I, I, then I start. But then once I start trying to eliminate, I might be there anywhere from – 20 to 30 minutes just kind of mm. kicking it waiting and like I, I do these like yogi breathing exercise where you like do all these like gyrations with your abdominal wall to try to like move it around and and that that helps a lot like i, I don't just sit there and wait i kind of do these abdominal things kind of that, that i know from yoga and that helps a lot but i mean sometimes it's like a, a while i'm just like all right, I, I got to get on with the rest of my day now. It's not all out yet, but so be it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that's so. uh, yeah, that's that is the that is the trip, you know, <laughs> really navigating, and that's where this this whole process of like we're talking about the mucuslessness and uh, you know that 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 kind of thing is uh, uh, you know really important. I think uh, Tony has something to add here. Uh, let me, yeah okay you're on okay cool yeah i wanted to t just touch on brian's piece about the enemas uh that's an experience that i've had a lot as well when it kind of retains and it's just so uncomfortable you're like i just want to get it out of me uh yeah. what i do at that point is um i actually do the enemas when i know that there's a bowel movement uh if you know what I mean, like sometimes yep. you'll know there's a lot of fruit like ready to come out, but it might not be three, it might be three or four hours till it naturally comes out. And what I'll do is I'll wait till that point and then I hit like a, a half a bag enema and it just comes right out. Uh, but if I did a whole bag, I know that some of it would get stuck and be uncomfortable. I see. Um, and that happens for me a lot, like when I'm in mucusless uh, phases, because the mucusless foods like really come through you quickly. Um, and when I've, I found that like when there's a lot of food at the front of the colon, uh, the water can kind of go past it and get stuck a little bit. Um, so when I'm mucusless, I usually wait until I know that there's waste that needs to come out. And then I do like a half a bag enema and it just comes out. And then I, if I want to, I can do a full bag and hold it and really let a cleansing happen. Hmm. You know, so maybe gotcha. you could try that like a half bag or something and see if, see if just like a immediate bowel movement comes out, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, I got you. definitely to the point where I I always have a, a natural bowel movement right before doing an enema. It's it's almost like a like a Pavlovian <laughs> response or something where I just got used to yeah. before I do the enema, I sit, you know, I go in the bathroom and sit down and I have a natural bowel movement and then uh you yeah. know, and go and, and, and do the That's what I've experienced, Professor Spira. Yeah, mm. me too, me too. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like when I want to avoid any discomfort, like um, the half bag works really well, like for the mornings 
or when you're running, you know, like you have school or work shortly after, just a half bag will kind of eliminate some things and you don't have to deal with like a long elimination. Uh, so I've just kind of found that half bag to be kind of like a fast food variety enema. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just you don't have to worry about retention or any discomfort or anything. Uh, right. 